In the name of the Father and the Son. Amen. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered through the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who, who your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory. We pray and grant that by these Paschal celebration, we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds, and minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ, yesterday and today, all in the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all times belong to Him, and all ages. To him be glory forever through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds may Christ the Lord God is and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel 
the darkness of our hearts and minds. Entrance, huh? Then center. the light of of Christ. 
Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angels, ministers of God, exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let her be glad, as glory floods her. A blaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, fill with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. This then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorpost of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry short to the Red Sea. This is the night that with the pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world set Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prisoners' bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, 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 wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault, that and so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night, 
dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. On this night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candleless solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, o Lord, we pray you that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these last days has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, 
and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed, it was very good. The Word of the Lord.
your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on, for yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen, and when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark, and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and to left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us free from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day, 
the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians. And the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution, by the power of your right hand, now you bring about 
as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread? Your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favors promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will pay, who will take pity on him to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways, it is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from heavens, and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord.
creation with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation let us pray almighty ever-living god sole hope of the world who by the preaching of your prophets unveil the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we conclude the three readings from the Old Testament, now the celebrant will intone Gloria Afterwards, <coughs> the priest will proceed to witness the presentation of the rising of Jesus, at which time the lights will be off. And once the presentation is over, they will come back to the sanctuary, the light will be on, and then we will proceed to the reading from the New Testament. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
name. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant by the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that, as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ, we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy the sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin. So his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. All please uh, stand. We now sing this solemn Alleluia. Alleluia will be sung by me. After me, you sing, don't sing with me. Because I cannot be up to your standard. So you sing after me, sing well.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, o When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices with which to go and anoint him. At very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, how will we roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb. But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right-hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, there is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter. He is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him, just as he had told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, please relax. And uh, a song will be played to you. And while the song is going on, please. Uh, Pay attention to the English translation of the lyrics. I 
at me why this song is played now. I have a reason to do that. This is a South African song in Zulu language, created by Master KG and uh, sung by Nom Sebo, a female singer. This has become a, a global hit. Millions, millions are listening to that, are dancing to that. Among the dancers, there are priests, there are nuns, there are monks, there are people of all walks of life. But as you already know about it, now, this song was created in 2019. And 2019, the COVID pandemic started. And this was not created in view of the pandemic, but the pandemic came simultaneously with this song. And uh, some young men in Angola took this song and created a dance and hashtagged it, Jerusalem Dance Challenge. And the whole world lapped it up. The whole world began to lap it up. Why they did that? To get people out of the negative impact of COVID-19. All of us are impacted by COVID-19 either directly or indirectly. All of us saw death in front of our eyes. I myself saw it. I was a victim of COVID. I was in the hospital and I saw people in my ward dying and carried away with no one to attend to them. The death showed its dark face and that had its tremendous impact. It impacted our family life, impacted education of children, impacted the economy of the world, impacted mental health, impacted every aspect of our life. That was COVID, terrible thing, to lift the spirit of humanity up. This song became a global hit by which healthcare people, doctors and nurses, and everyone who attended to the COVID-19 victims, and even the victims of COVID-19, all began to come out with some sort of lively spirit. That's the beauty of this song. That's why I wanted you to hear this, because today we have sung a still greater global hit. That's before the gospel, not the Alleluia that I sang, but the Alleluia, uh, the lady sang after that. Okay. That is the greatest global hit. Today, billions of people all over the world will be singing Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Savior is risen. 
And that is really the greatest of all global hit. It never loses its charm. It continues to influence people from year 2000 until now. It goes on. We can always explain it away, the resurrection of Jesus, a myth, a very subjective experience of some crazy men and women. It can be explained it away in that way, but that does not stop the novelty and uh, the impact of, Alleluia, the Lord is risen, because it is something real. If any of you think that this is not real, then Christianity is not real. The Pope is not real. The bishops are not real. We priests are not real. And nor are you real. Why are you sitting here? Better get up and go home and do something useful. You will not go. Nobody is getting up. Ah, that shows that all of you believe really believe that Jesus is risen. Do you? Yes. Yeah, you really believe that Jesus is risen. When Jesus rose from the dead, what happened? God unleashed his power into this world. The great power of God. And we have all experienced that power. In a gradual way, we heard in the readings of today, creation, exodus, and uh, the reading from prophet, and finally from St. Paul, how God releases his power and how, how the whole creation is uh, touched by the power of God. We have all faced power, different kinds of power, the powers of nature, tsunamis, typhoons, the storms, earthquakes, and thunder and lightning we saw at the time of resurrection today. We have all seen those powers of nature and we, have, we know that we are no match for that. We remain helpless. We are no match. We have also seen the powers of technology. The power of technology has impacted us so much, especially the arrival of artificial intelligence. We do not know where the world is going. We do not know what will happen to us and what is in store for us. We remain again helpless. In all these things, we have touched only the surface of the power. And there is the third power, the God power, that came through Jesus Christ. The God power. The God power was unleashed on the world and the world was liberated. The world never remains helpless before that power. Uh, this is the power I was dreaming about. Finally, it has come. It has come in the form of the resurrection of Jesus. And there, we are really touched by that power. That's why none of you will get up and go away from here when I say, if Jesus has not risen, then Christianity is a fraud. If Jesus has not risen, then I am a fraud. And all of you listening to me is also fraud. We don't believe in that. It does not explain the power that we have experienced whenever we uttered that word, Alleluia. That word contains immense power. It's a capsule, terrible capsule, a capsule that can simply release its power and liberate the whole world. 
the one word, Alleluia. And that Alleluia we sang and we celebrated because today Jesus has risen. Jesus has risen and the new Jerusalem is open to us. This is what we heard in the song. This is not my home. Jerusalem is my home. Take me there. Guide me. My kingdom is not here. My place is not here. Take me there. Jerusalem ik hailami. Jerusalem is my home. That's what we heard. So Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, that song was created with the theme of the chapter 21 of Revelation, book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth disappeared, passed away. The sea also passed away. And I saw the new city of God, the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven like a bride for her husband. That new Jerusalem, that new Jerusalem is open for us. So we should be singing, Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem is my home. Take me there, my Lord. While I walk to that new Jerusalem, my path is filled with pitfalls, all kinds of pitfalls. And therefore, guide me, guard me, take me. You need to hold my hand. The risen Lord will hold your hand and take you there. And that's a, a great global hit we are celebrating today. Let us not be disappointed that I belong to a group which is looked at as someone unwanted in this world. As a Christian, there will be occasions when people tell you, you are not wanted here. You are a burden to this world. You don't allow us to live as we want to live. And that's what we want to be. We want to be a question mark, a challenge before all people. We want to tell them that there is a new Jerusalem. You are supposed to go there. This is not your home. Therefore, open your heart to the risen Jesus. Say Alleluia every moment of your life. And that Alleluia should fill your heart with hope. We are living in a world which says, is there hope? Is there any hope for humanity? The whole humanity is suffering. War everywhere, disease everywhere, unemployment everywhere. The national debts are increasing and the politicians are maneuvering their way to the top post. All these things are intriguing us, confusing us. And then we, we helplessly feel, is there a hope for us? We don't see that hope in the horizon of our human life. But then Christ, the risen Lord, has brought that hope. In that code language, there is a language called Morse code, which the military, navy, and all these people use with the lines and dots, and also some special kind of sound by which they communicate. A submarine was stuck at the bottom of the sea and the people inside could not get out of it. They were sort of condemned to die. All the resources were running short. Oxygen was getting, becoming less and less and that's the time a sea diver risked his life went down to the bottom of the sea and he landed on the top of the sub. And he, the Morse code was tapped on the top. 
And from inside, another code came. Is there hope? From a desperate group of people, is there hope? He quoted back, there is hope. This is the code given to us. We were all shrouded in darkness. We were all trapped in our own self-made prison. And there we lie and ask ourselves, is there hope? And Christ the risen Lord is telling us, he has dived into our life and he is telling us, yes, my dear people, there is hope. The new Jerusalem is open for you. When I rose from the dead, the future became present. Looks contradictory, but that is the truth of resurrection. The future became present. Our future in the new Jerusalem, a life with God the Father, that future has become present. It is true. And that is our hope. Hold on to that. It's a little straw in this world where you are almost drowning because of all the toxic experiences that we have in the world, all the negativities that you face in your house, outside your house, in the society, in the church. And this little straw is given to you. Hold on to that. The future has become present. And that is the great resurrection of the Lord. And uh, today is the time when you should say, today is the day of my liberation because the Lord Jesus has risen from the dead. And because he has risen from the dead, I have all the reason to rejoice. I rejoice because there is hope. The future has been made present to me. All please stand. We now have the blessing of the water. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of redemption. Graciously bless this water for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies you also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race, and last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord.
the renewal of our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you renounce sin? Do you renounce sin? I do. So as to live in the freedom of the children of God. I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan and the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord in eternal life. Amen. You will be now sprinkled with the holy water.
prayer of the faithful. The Lord is risen, heaven and earth rejoice in the reconciliation of God with all creation. Filled with Easter joy, we bring to God our needs for the church and for the world. Our response, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that as leaders in the church, they may encourage the faithful to persevere in their faith. We pray. Come Lord Jesus. For the rulers and people of UAE, for welcoming us into this country, that the Lord may protect them, grant them wisdom, good health, and benevolence. We pray. Come Lord Jesus. We are an Easter people, and we ask God's blessing on the church. May our witness to the resurrection be a source of joy and hope in a world of despair and pain. We pray. Come Lord Jesus. By the death and rising of Jesus, sin has been destroyed and no longer as power over us. May we live no longer as slaves of sin, but alive in Christ Jesus, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that the celebration of Easter may help us to live our Christian faith with fervor and courage, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray for our personal needs. Lord God, your power is beyond compare, and your love for us is beyond words to describe. In your compassion, answer the prayers of your ransomed people, and grant us the riches of your mercy. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord, <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right. And just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising he restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. <coughs> Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom to our and the glory of yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul should be healed. Brothers and sisters, it is time for the Holy Communion. <coughs> the priests and the lay ministers together will distribute the Holy Communion inside the church, in the church compound, in the halls, and in the football court. Only Catholics who are in a state of grace and who believe in the presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist are to receive the Holy Communion. Others, please remain where you are in prayer till the end of the service.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My dear friends, we have come to the end of our journey, 40 days journey with Jesus, and it has culminated in the celebration of Easter Vigil today, and uh, especially during the Holy Week from Palm Sunday until today, everything has been going on very well because of the hard work of so many people. I would like to say a word of thanks to all of them. First of all, we should be grateful to the government of Dubai for allowing us to have this church and have our expression of faith and celebration of all that we need to celebrate. And uh, permission has been generously granted. And uh, with the government of Dubai, there was the CDA, the department in charge of the worship places in, in Dubai, and with them, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. The Dubai police was there with us to take care of the discipline around the church and the parking. The RTA and uh, the DHA very specially granted us permission to park our cars in the DHA premises. So we thank them. Then I thank the priests, my brother priests here, who are always a pillar of strength for me. They were there with me to support all through the hard work of confessions during this uh, uh, Holy Week and even before that. And we had two special confessors came from outside. Fathers Bibin and uh, Father Dave. Both of them heard a lot of confessions and carried all your burdens with them. It will be taken far away from here. And we have the Reverend Sisters who are always a source of help and inspiration for us. They do little work, people who work behind the curtain. And we have the Parish Council and the Liturgy Council who have the general supervision of everything that happens in the church. And uh, we thank them, all the members of the parish council and also the liturgy council. And then we have uh, great people who really work on the ground, the ushers. They have been here all through, really working hard. And uh, they have to put up a lot of work before and after and during and uh, we generally don't realize how much work, how much time, how much of their energy is spent in the church compound. So also the lay ministers, a big army of them sitting there, they have been serving, you know, a huge crowd was served Holy Communion in no time. There's another miracle. People can't believe how so many people are served and all because all of them went out and served Holy Communion. And uh, we have the choir who has been singing well all through the Holy Week. The lectors who did the readings today and uh, throughout the Holy Week. The altar service, they're always uh, great. The altar service sitting here and those who are not here, all of them did good job and uh, the audiovisual team, which uh, uh, gives us good service in having the system that takes the message right into your ears and very clearly. And uh, we have an unseen team that is the medical team. Medical team is there in two places and they are always attentive. Anything happens to anyone, 
They are their qualified medical team, doctors and nurses, and uh, most of the cases happen outside. Therefore, you people who sit here may not see that. And a good number of cases every year, and even yesterday we had many cases, so the medical team did a very good job all these days, and then we had uh, beautiful decorations all these days, the altar of repose in the main hall, the church decorations, and finally today's uh, resurrection and show. Everything was done by our sacristan Adrian and his team and the sponsors behind him. Thanks to all of them. I hope Adrian heard this clapping. <laughs> None of us got clapped, only you got. <laughs> so, uh, you did well. Okay. <laughs> he deserves that. A lot of hard work has gone through that. And uh, above all, I want to thank you, the congregation here and the vast crowd outside. You've been always great, well disciplined, no complaints. You come, you occupy the places you get, and you are satisfied with that. You praise God, you sing hallelujah, and go home. So thank you very much, disciplined uh, parishioners and everyone here. Now you will have a short message from our bishop. Peace be with you. The time of Lent is fulfilled by celebrating Easter, the foundation of our faith. We have followed the invitation of Pope Francis on this path of penance. Through the desert, God leads us from slavery to freedom. Christian life is a path of freedom to be children of God and be loved to the point of having all our sins forgiven. This is the great announcement of Easter. Jesus, the true Passover lamb, took upon himself the sins of the world, our sins. He freed us from evil. The love of Christ shows that each one is worth infinitely more than his sin and limitations. Our sins no longer define our lives. The crucified has risen. Life has conquered death. We are no longer slaves, but redeemed children, loved with a love stronger than death. Christ gave his life for every person we need. Let us bring this invincible joy into our families and bear witness to the risen Jesus through our lives. But how are we made participants in Christ's victory? We were united with the death and resurrection of Jesus through baptism. We are new creatures. On this Easter day, let us remember our baptism, in which we received our vocation to be saints, to love with the same love as Jesus. Baptism has the strength to make us all one in Christ, though from different origins, traditions, languages, and rites. Our church in the Gulf is unique and called to be a sign of unity for all. The world today, marked by wars and conflicts, needs the testimony of new men and women united by the love of Christ. He is our peace the one who has overcome 
every division. Let us pray for all those places and peoples who have no peace. In particular, in our region, especially in the Holy Land and in Yemen, which is part of our vicariate, where many suffer from the conflicts. Let us pray for the Christians who work for peace in these countries. We are called to be peacemakers. Dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to celebrate the joy of Easter with your family and friends. May the peace of the risen Christ reign in the hearts of everyone. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Hallelujah. Don't want to go? Stand, please. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. On behalf of all the priests here and uh, the parish, I wish you all a very happy Easter. May the power of Easter remain with you and give you, guide you, and lead you to Jerusalem. Keep singing Jerusalem. <laughs> okay. Last year, I invited you to a dinner, a virtual dinner, and none of you turned up. So today, go home and have a good dinner and break your fast. Thank you. God bless you. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.